One of the most instantly recognizable features of the Altair 8800 is its front panel just full of lights and switches. And in the early days of the Altair, this front panel was the only way to even use the computer. And even later when you could connect a teletype or a terminal or floppy drives, even then the front panel was still an integral part of using the Altair. Because of its importance, we're going to study the front panel in detail across a number of videos. In the video today, we're going to go over just some of the basics and learn how to examine and change memory locations. This bottom row of switches was used primarily to control the computer. We turned the computer on and off. The stop run button was meant to toggle between normal operation and front panel mode. Once you stop the computer, you could then use the switches to examine memory locations and change things. The single step button was used to single step through instructions just one memory cycle at a time. Understand some instructions may take several memory cycles to complete just one of the 8080 instructions. The examine switch was used to examine memory locations. The deposit switch was used to change memory locations. The reset switch was used to reset the 8080 processor and any uh, device on the bus that was hooked to that signal. The protect button was used to set memory protection. It was not widely adopted and it was kind of up to the memory card manufacturer as to how it was implemented, if implemented at all. And the two auxiliary switches never saw any sort of mainstream application assigned to them. Above the control switches are 16 more switches. These have three different functions, one of which is to specify a full 16-bit address for memory. Um, operations. This group of eight switches on the right was used to set the data byte to write into memory when you were doing memory change operations. The left group of eight switches could actually be read by a running program. So it was a crude input mechanism and we'll see later that Altair Basic and tape loaders have you set those switches to, de to define the type of serial board or interface you're using to your paper tape reader and to your terminal. Above the switches are 16 lights that are hooked to the address bus in the um, Altair. And for the most part, those will always show what is actively happening on the address bus. The eight data lights are hooked to the data input bus that is directed into the 8080 processor. So we don't actually get to see what's coming out of the 8080, just what's going in. Now when the computer is in the stop mode, these lights will pretty reliably show us what's coming out of memory. When the computer is running, that bus is not necessarily driven all the time. It's kind of dependent on the memory card itself or the I.O. device. So the data lights aren't a great indication when the computer is running of exactly what's on the buses. All these other lights are status lights that in great detail show us the type of memory cycle that the 8080 is in what state the 8080 is in, and we're going to dedicate an entire video into understanding those lights in more detail. But enough talk, let's get on and have some fun. To power up the Altair, you just turn the on switch to the on position, and it's up and running. That's basically all you have to do. Now, with your modern PC, when you turn it on, it goes through a reset sequence, boots from the BIOS ROMs, which then turn around and boot whatever operating system you might have on a hard disk. The Altair, on the other hand, simply powers up into a stop state. That's all there is to it. Uh, at this point, it's actually in an undefined state. We don't even know what state the processor is in. The first thing that needs to be done is to give it a hard reset. And to do that, it's actually a two-step sequence. We don't want to run just the reset. We raise and hold the stop button and then press and release reset. That is a good hard reset on the Altair. As you can see, our address bus has gone to completely to zeros. That's because the reset sets the program counter in the 8080 to all zeros. And what we're seeing here is the fact that the program counter has been set to zero. We're also seeing what is in memory location zero. It happens to be this octal value of 45. How did that get there? We don't know. It's basically just random since when the solid state memory powers up, you don't know for sure what's going to be in there. All right, so this is now the standard operating mode when the computer is in front panel mode or is stopped. At this point, the address lights 
tell us what address is being looked at, and the data light show us what's at that address. Let's say I wanted to see what was in memory location 2. How would I do that? Set the 16-bit address to location 2, and raise examine. The address lights now show me I'm looking at location 2, and the data lights show us what's in that location. Again, it's just random whatever happened to be there. How would I look at location 3? We set the address to location 3, raise examine. We can see the address lights show us we're looking at location 3, and there's what happens to be in it. Now it's very common to want to look at sequential memory locations, so there's a shortcut. The examine next increases the address by 1. You can see we've gone to 4, and it shows us what's in location 4. Examine next, we're up to address 5. That's what happens to be in location 5. Do it again, location 6. One thing that's very important to note is that we want to pay attention to the address lights, not the switches. You can pretty much ignore the switches after you do an examine because the address you're looking at is what's on the light, not the switches. That just takes a little bit of getting used to. Alright, so we can look at these random data values stored in memory. How would we put something in that we want to be in memory? Let's say we want to store the value 7 into location 0. How would that be done? Well, the first thing is we have to get the address lights to show that we're looking at location 0. So to do that, we set an address of 0 and hit examine. So now the address lights say I am looking at 0, but here's presently what's in there. We want a 7. So I'll put the value 7 on the switches. Now you hit deposit. Deposit takes the value of the switches and puts them in the location shown on the lights. As you can see, we have a 7 in location 0. Let's put a 6 in location 1. How do you do that? Well, I know I can do an examine next. That gets me to location 1. And I want the value 6 stored in location 1. So now I hit deposit. It puts the value from these right 8 switches into the address shown on the light. So I now have my 6 in location 1. Let's put a 5 in location 2. So examine next gets me to location 2. We see what's presently there. I want to put a 5 in there. So I say deposit, and now in location 2, I've got the 5. It's very common to want to put values in sequential locations of memory. When we enter bootloading programs for BASIC, we'll be doing this just all the time. So the shortcut is this deposit next button. Deposit next first increments the address, then deposits what's on the switches into that location. So we're at location 2. Let's say we want to put the value 4 into location 3. I set it to 4 and hit deposit next. You can see I've incremented to location 3 and I now have my 4 in there. If we want to put a 3 in the next location, we set it to 3 and hit deposit next. It first incremented to address 4 and then put the value 3 in there. Let's say I want to put the value 2 into the next location. It first incremented to 5 and put the 2 into location 5. Let's go ahead and complete this. Put a 1 into location 6, and we'll put a 0 into location 7. I should have the values 7 down through 0 in locations 0 through 7 now. How do we check that? Well, let's go back and examine memory location 0. I set the switches to 0. They already happen to be. Hit examine. The lights show me I'm looking at location 0. Data lights show I've got a 7 in location 0, just like I wanted. Examine the next location. Location 1 is shown on the lights. There's my 6. Next memory location is 2. There's my 5. Next memory location is a 3. There's my 4. And we'll go through the next locations. Location 4, 5, 6, and 7. Add the values all the way down to 0, just like we wanted. Those basic skills for examining and changing memory will be all you need in order to load programs, make sure you've put them in right, um, check data values you might have entered, um, and get things up and running requiring bootstrap loaders like BASIC and other programs. So that's all we have today on this first video. In the next video, we'll enter a simple program, see how to single step through it, and also see what the address lights are telling us when a program is running. Now the computer used in this video today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This 
computer very accurately duplicates the look and feel, the features and performance, and the limitations of the real Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes the computer much more affordable and reliable than buying a, a vintage computer. It also makes it where you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage quality machine as you play with it. This is a great computer to experience this exciting period in history hands-on. Be sure to visit the folks at AltairClone.com to learn more about this great machine.